Hi, in this example, I'm going to show how to use the MATLAB Computer Vision Toolbox to compute the distance between a person and the observer camera. What this example is going to do is use a disparity map, which is basically a, a map of the distances between the pixels of two stereo images and use that to determine the three dimensional co uh, coordinates corresponding to each pixel. From that and the bounding box provided by the people detector function, you can compute the centroid and the centroid it gives you the distance. In the description of this video, I'm putting a reference to another video I recently made in which I went through the monocular visual odometry example. In that example, which is part of the SLAM algorithm, you are computing the, the three-dimensional coordinates based on successive frames in the video. Uh, that example uses only a monocular camera, so you have to use successive frames to get the, the three-dimensional properties. If you combine a stereo camera with that example, the accuracy is going to go significantly uh, higher. So is using stereo cameras is very important for SLAM applications, with, uh, SLAM algorithms, which uh, have applications in robotics, uh, UAVs, uh, automated driving, etc. So the stereo, the stereo, the, sorry, the disparity image that I was referring to was this one. And from the image, you can see that the, the farther point is back in the office. Uh, it is back here and this is the closest place and this uh, wall is the closest thing. So you can see in here that the, the blue is the, the farther one and the red yellow is the closest one so you can see here that this is closer closer and farther farther and this is consistent with what we experience when let's say you have an object and you move it a uh, one feet uh, very close to you that one feet of movement is going to be very significant when uh, when you when the object is close to you but if you move it very far away from you and move it one feet then that movement, uh, according to visual projection, is going to be smaller. So the, the distance between points uh, as you go farther in the stereo camera is going to be shorter and shorter and shorter, and that's how the three-dimensional depth uh, is derived. And that map is passed to the reconstruct scene, and from that uh, you get this three-dimensional map. We're going to see it. It's basically uh, a three-dimensional plot of the structure seen around the images and finally you compute the distance okay so let's do this video uh, by clicking open script uh, this article link is in the description of the video so that takes us to here and let's put a breakpoint in here and hit f5 to start running it and the first thing is uh, loading this map file which gives us the the camera properties and camera properties is gonna have a it's gonna have a set of rotation translations uh, that correspond to the images that were used to calibrate this camera and we can see in here that you're gonna have a 12 rotation 12 3 by 3 rotation matrix 12 a uh, three-dimensional uh, points XYZ and basically you have uh, some other properties derived and at the end you're going to have a, an essential matrix fundamental matrix and other properties for for the for the relative uh, to uh, the relative rotation relative translation between the two cameras and this is used to be able to derive the the three dimensional information from the from the images from the stereo images okay so let's plot them and as i mentioned before uh, these are the images that were used to calibrate the two stereo cameras so these are the two videos that we're going to use uh, one corresponds to the left camera and the other one to the right camera so we're going to use a video reader to pull the images and a video player to dump uh, whatever images we create and that will be the annotated images with the bounding box and the distance okay so first uh, we're going to do the whole procedure with only one snapshot and then we're going to do exactly the same within a while loop uh, to process the, the rest of the video and that will be the end of the example. Okay, so let's read a couple of frames. We first are going to use the rectify stereo images that is going to align the images based on the stereo parameters. Input a left image, right image, and we get rectified images. Okay, 
Now we're going to show the rectify images and we are going to use the stereo anal anaglyft uh, function that is going to put the two images together left and right in a way uh, that if you use a red sea and glasses you should be able to see this in, in three dimensions so if if you have uh, those glasses uh, and you're able uh, to see this in 3d please uh, write a comment in this video uh, to confirm that this is can be seen three-dimensionally okay uh, so now let's get the important thing uh, that really doesn't matter in this example uh, the the important part is the disparity SGM map this is what is gonna give us an image in which each it has the same size of the image 514 by 719 and you can confirm it in here that they have the same size to use this we have to pass the gray images so that's why we use RGB to gray and basically each point is gonna have the the distance between the two points in the stereo images and we're gonna see how that looks we already saw this in the example page and we can see here the the the, the depth uh, that basically the distance between the pixels is a reflection of the depth and that information that disparity map is passed to the reconstruct scene along with the stereo camera parameters and that's going to derive the three dimensional points we're going to do some scaling i, I suppose that the, this might be a unit of uh, things convert meters yes that is that is a uh, convert to meters uh, and then uh, those three dimensional points we're going to put in a point cloud and when we put it here we pass the left image and what we're doing is basically mapping the three dimensional points to a particular color so the three dimensional point is going to have a coordinate xyz coordinate alongside with a color and we can see that in here so you have uh, the the location the three dimensional points and the colors in this point cloud structure so there's a function called PC player to be able to display those uh, points. So we create the, the, the point cloud player. And this is a method. View is a method in which you pass the point cloud. So let's take a look. Let me see. Nope. Uh, I have to use actually this plot. And you can see that this is very effective. I mean, it, it should be easy to to interpolate this. And even you can see the person in there. But at least you, you should be able to derive the, the wall and even the colors of them from this. And this just from one snapshot. This is incredible. Okay. So now uh, we are using a people detector. And that's to detect the persons that are walking in the video. And we pass the left video. And we only get one bounding box. And from the bounding box, uh, we divide by two the width and height and sum it to the X minimum and Y minimum to get the centroid. And this is the two dimensional centroid. So in order to batch process this, uh, this is used to get all the Y's, but in this case, it's only one. So you get a scalar in here. But if you have multiple bounding box, then it will be all Y's and all X. And basically pass the size of the image to get the linear index. And now uh, he's getting the individually the x, y, s, and c for the three points. And I understand that he's trying to he uses a linear index to be able to batch process this. But I understand that you sh could should be able to pass the centroid directly here as x, y and get the corresponding three-dimensional point which is what what you are doing basically you have a centroid in here a two-dimensional centroid and you get in the three-dimensional centroid and then using pythagoras uh, then you get the distance and yeah and basically with that distance which in this case is six meters uh, you're just gonna create a string and that string you pass it as the label to the bounding box so you're gonna use the insert object annotation with the image bounding box and label and this is what we get so yeah so this is five hmm that's kind of weird yeah it should be 6.773 meters okay so we're gonna do exactly the same for each frame. We read the frame, we rectify the images, we convert them to gray, create the disparity map, uh, get the three-dimensional points, 
it rescale them to meters and then play it in the point cloud and then use the people detector see if we get a bounding box then we get the two dimensional centroid we get the linear index get the corresponding a uh, three dimensional point because for each two dimensional point we have a three dimensional point that we were able to obtain from here from this place and once we get the three dimensional point we just get the distance i put it in the label and insert it as an annotation into the image and let's see the video rolling so we can see here that the back side is like six meters and it gets uh, this distance about two meters yeah so basically the centroid is the distance between the person and the the object so this show how effective uh, the, a stereo image can be in getting three-dimensional information uh, from an environment. Okay, that's it for the video. Thank you very much for watching.